Hey there guys, it's another day and time for another tutorial. Thanks for joining along once more. In the last tutorial, we discussed how we can scaffold out some rest endpoints by creating a class decorated with nestjs's controller as we see in polls.controller.js here. We set up the shape or definition as well of incoming data in the dto.ts file or dtos.ts file. We also included some validation to make sure, for example, that this is a string that can become an int and the length of the nomination topic or poll topic, I should say, as well as the poll ID and a user's name, which is between one and 25 characters. As always, if you'd like to join along with me, you can go to the Ranker course repo at my GitHub, where you can find branches for each of the tutorials. Today's will be 03, and then you can follow these instructions to deget if you don't want the commit history, or you could use just clone if you do want to keep all of the commits. Let's now take a look at our first provider, which will be the poll service, which you can see inside of this big diagram here. Why are we going to create a service? The poll service will handle logic that belongs neither really to the parsing of the incoming requests and outgoing responses, nor does it really have anything to do with storing entities of data in our database. Often there is some logic that we need to execute, like operating on the incoming request before saving the data, or we may need to reach out to another service or provider. Now, if that seems confusing, let's take a look at the example in this diagram, which will hopefully reinforce or explain better what this does. Last time we scaffolded out the polls controller here, which had three endpoints for creating, joining, and rejoining a poll. Let's now just focus on the example of creating a poll. Remember that this extracts the request body's poll topic and the number of votes for each voter. It also extracts the voter's name or the creator of the poll's name. And what we're going to do is create this service, which will be injected into the polls controller. We'll show how that happens later, but we're going to make this poll service, which is a class in JavaScript, accessible to the controller. It is going to take that incoming data from the poll, or sorry, from the controller, such as the topic and the number of votes and the initial player name. And the service is going to create a poll ID and user ID. Now, sometimes this would be done in the database, but for this application, it will be done in this so-called service layer. The service is then going to reach out to a polls repository, which it will have access to, which more or less handles saving the polls data into Redis. And then information about this saved data, if not the whole piece of data itself, is returned to our polls service. From this data, our polls service or our poll services create poll method, will actually create a signed JSON web token from the user ID and information about the poll. And then this data will be sent back to the controller, which will then be sent as a response or an HTTP response to the client. We'll also add similar logic for joining a poll and rejoining a poll, but I just wanted to keep this example constrained to only creating a poll. I've now opened Visual Studio Code where we will get to work on creating our polls service file. Let's also create a file for some common types that we'll be using in our service. So first let's create a polls.service.ts and this service sort of nomenclature is used in general in Nest. And notice that it's in the polls folder. And then I'm going to create one more file just to store some types. And maybe types isn't a great name, but works good enough for me. In types, we're going to define some parameters for incoming fields to our service methods. The types that we'll use will have names based on the method, and then I'll just append fields to it. And for the response types, or sorry, the return types of these methods, 
I will probably end up using result for the suffix. For now, we're not actually going to define the shape of the data that will return in this poll service because we're going to change it so soon anyways. So let's just rely on TypeScript's type inference for now. We'll now go back into this polls.service.ts file and we'll create that first service finally. Remember that in controllers, to create something called a controller, we annotate a class with an at controller. In a very similar fashion, we can create a class with the at injectable from the nest.js common module. Now we call this function of this decorator and we export a class and we'll call it the poll service. Very good. And this imports with double quotes for some reason, but let's save and it will auto format. We're also going to add our first three methods to this class. And the methods that we'll add will correspond to those in the controller, though it's not strictly that you'll have a one-to-one -one correspondence between your controller and your service. And then I want to import these types. I will just hit command period to add the imports for these join pull fields and rejoin fields. And there we go. We have some warnings for empty bodies, but we'll fix that shortly. So what this injectable means now is that we can provide this service to a module. And when we provide any sort of class or feature or constants, whatever it may be to a module, that means the other controllers and other services have access to this injected service. And we could inject this service globally or at the app level inside of the app.module.ts. But if we want to constrain it so that only polls feature has access to it, we will add this polls service to the polls module. Let's go ahead and do that right now. I think I was going to do this later, but now that I'm talking about it, what the heck? So we'll add the polls service and it should auto import here. There we go. And I'll save. With these methods scaffolded out, I want to add some very basic logic just so that we can show something really in this poll service. And the logic that we'll add is going to be to add some IDs or create some IDs when creating a poll or joining a poll. So let's go to the source folder and I want to create a file called IDs.typescript. You may locate this file somewhere else, maybe a utils file. People have their opinions. I'm not too dogmatic about it for now. Inside of this file, we're going to make use of a library that we included in package.json. Let me open it. And that's the package.json of the server folder. And if we open this, you should see something called nano ID. I had a little pause there, but you should see nano ID version 3.3.1, and this is a library to create IDs. Back in IDs.typescript, let's add the code for creating our IDs. We're going to import a custom alphabet function and the nano ID function from nano ID. And the reason we're going to use custom alphabet is this allows us to create that sort of poll or game code, which I only want to use digits zero through nine and capital letters, and I chose this code to be six characters along. Maybe four is sufficient if you did some sort of name collision checking for the IDs, but let's just stick, stick with six right now. I'm also going to create a standard nano ID if we hover for the user's ID, which will be stored in the database. And this will be a unique symbol of 21 symbols or a unique ID of 21 symbols. We'll also create an eight symbol nomination ID. So for each time someone submits something they want to nominate, it will also receive an ID eventually, though we won't use this for a while. Let's now go back to the polls service and add some of our logic. Let's first add it to create poll. And in here, we're going to create a poll ID because this poll has yet to be created. So let's import that. and. For this initial user who creates the poll, we want them to have a user ID. For now, I'm just going to take the fields passed into this method, return them or spread them in an object, and then also append the user ID and poll ID, though append is probably the wrong word. 
You get the idea though. Let's do something very similar for join poll. In join poll, we only need to create a user ID because the fields in join poll will include the poll ID, meaning the first user creates the poll and then they provide the poll ID to the person who wants to join the poll. And we'll return an object in a very similar fashion. For rejoin poll, let's just go ahead and return whatever's passed to the function. At a later date, we're going to actually return or use a JSON web token. And this is something we'll learn how to extract at a later tutorial. To finish up today, I now want to show how we can access our injectable poll service, which we provided to the polls module as a provider in the polls controller. Let's say that again. Let's see how we can access the poll service in the polls controller. To do that, of course, we need to open up the polls controller. Let's do that. And we access these injected services via a class constructor. We create a class constructor at the top of the class here with the constructor keyword. And then we will inject the poll service as something that's private to this class. And of course we need to import this poll service and the polls controller knows which poll service to use via that dependency injection. I'll add a little space here and save. Let's replace the logic of these methods here to more or less just call the create poll service or the join poll service methods, and then just relay the response back to the user. In create, let's add the following. So we will await the result of calling the poll service create poll, which we just called. And notice that we don't need to update the create poll DTO body because it already conforms to the body of the create poll fields argument, this one. Let's do something almost exactly the same for join poll. You can see for join poll, we're basically just forwarding on the join poll DTO to the poll service join poll method. And of course, let me mention, because this is a class to access the poll service from the constructor, we need this dot poll service. For the rejoin method of the poll service, we are going to end up extracting data from a JSON web token. So for now, I'm just going to create some dummy data to pass along to poll service dot rejoin poll. Here's the data we'll use. We'll have a name. I'm just saying that it's going to be from a token, a poll ID also from a token and a user ID. You guessed it also coming from a token. We'll return this response or returned promise from rejoin poll to the user via HTTP. And we can do that in these controllers just by returning. We don't need to return a response.json object, though we can do that. But by default, if we return some object, we'll return JSON for the REST API. Let's now demonstrate this application. We'll do that by firing it up and hitting these endpoints, join and rejoin and just create pull in Postman. And before we do that, I'll note that we have this unused logger at the top of the file. You can just remove logger from the nest.js common imports, save, and then in the terminal use npm run start. This will start up client and server applications. Everything looks good. Let's go to Postman. And for create poll, I'm accessing the base URL, which is localhost 3000 slash polls, a post request with a topic, votes, and name. And we should see, if you recall, a user ID and a poll ID. So let's join. Don't worry about these scripts. That's something for later. But you see we have a six digit or six character poll ID and a user ID. Let's join. And a join poll requires a name and the poll ID. And you see it returns with the poll ID that's just a test one for now and the user ID. Let's now try the rejoin endpoint. And remember the rejoin endpoint will just return that mock data that we created or hard coded. So let's go to rejoin. You can see I already just tested it, but let's send again. And we get the name from token, poll ID also from token and user ID, guess where this comes from. Thanks for joining again. Next time we're going to build our own module for interacting with Redis. 
basically we're going to create a module that allows us to access a Redis library called IO Redis. And I hope you'll learn a lot in the process. This is one of the areas where I learned a lot. So stay tuned. See you next time.